Okay, here we are at the Chicago International Film uh, Festival, and I'm honored to be here with uh, one of the filmmakers, uh, Tara Kittle. Tara, what'd you, how'd you get started in the filmmaking? Well, I got started, there was a semester um, at, I went to UVA as an undergrad, and one summer I went up to NYU and took a class there, and I was actually in love with this guy. And I had been directing theater at the time, and he wanted to go to NYU one summer, and I didn't want to be without him. So I went up to NYU, I rolled in this film class, because that's what he was taking, and I ended up completely falling in love with the medium. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just as a total, like, just like flukes in some ways. And uh, I actually made better films than he did that summer, which is, <laughs> yeah, which is really funny how that totally works. But um, that's how I kind of got started. Where did, are you from New York, or where are you from? I was actually um, born in Canada. I was um, born in Ottawa. And then I moved to Virginia when I was 11. And that's where I grew up outside of DC. And then I went to undergrad at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, where I studied English literature. And then they didn't have any film production there. So that's why um, my friend at the time, my boyfriend at the time, Joe, <laughs> wanted to go to NYU and take this class. And we'd actually met because he auditioned for a play that I was directing. And he's actually extraordinarily talented. And the funny, actually, part, a little addendum to the story is we both got accepted to USC, where I go to grad school now, in the same semester. So now we actually make films together still, even though we broke up a couple years ago. <laughs> Would you guys be co-directing a movie in the future? Or Definitely, we, um, I'll probably definitely produce his films that he writes and directs. Um, Joe, which is, even though I had better movies than he did that summer, which is funny, he's definitely taken a lot of leaps and bounds. And his film, actually, for this class, um, that we made the film that's actually screening here at Chicago, his film is screening at Denver this weekend. So on the same day, we're both going to have a film screening in different parts of the country. That's a movie within <laughs> itself. Exactly, it is, totally, totally. It's, you never know where love's going to lead you. Yeah, exactly, that's, exactly. <laughs> that's the truth. What type of uh, films are you interested in? in making? I'm really interested in making um, like great romantic uh, tragedies, um, sort of along the lines of Titanic and yeah. the idea that, um, you know, sort of like long lost love and um, that sometimes in life you can love someone really deeply, but given the circumstances or um, other some other fo outside force, you can never, it's never meant to be. And I find that incredibly um, true in life and I find you can meet really special people at given times and if things had been different, you would be together. And I find something um, really sort of beautiful in, um, you know, finding love and in where you can make things work. But I'm a big believer that sometimes your true love is someone that in this lifetime you might not be able to be together. And that's a theme that I really want to explore in my movies and um, that I want to make sort of films about. So. That's terrific yeah. because you don't see too many movies made like that. How do you uh, perceive the film industry today? I think the film industry is really growing and changing a lot. and. They're really open to new ideas and they really love and they're really supportive of young filmmakers. And I find living in Los Angeles that, you know, Hollywood has a really sort of like a rough reputation in some ways, particularly with independent filmmakers as being sort of um, against their ideas. But I've actually sort of experienced quite the contrary, that every time that I've met someone in Hollywood, they've always been really excited and they've always wanted to hear my ideas. and. So I found it actually really sort of like rewarding experience so far. And and I think it's very important though that Hollywood is sort of known for certain types of movies. And I think it's really important as a society that we open up and make sure we provide opportunities to people who want to make films outside of the type of films that Hollywood makes. And I think as a culture, we really owe it to ourselves to sort of support the filmmakers whose films we might see and be like, whoa, I, I didn't like that, it didn't work for me. But it's that kind of creative environment that really fosters the type of films that maybe we will like one day. And um, filmmaking, because it's so expensive, people often start to cripple their creative minds with fears that, well, what if no one buys a ticket? Or what if no one comes? And so they start to, um, in some ways, you know, get afraid. And I think the, the only way you're actually ever going to make a great film is if you totally go all out on it. And it might be a total disaster because of it. And then you try something completely new and completely innovative, but ultimately that's where the best movies come from. I mean, it's really funny because Star Wars, which is now 
you know, a big, you know, it's part of our cultural norm, and I grew up on it. I mean, I'm part of this Star Wars generation, and going to USC, I hear about it all the time. You know what I'm saying? But it's true. But but people forget that he had a really difficult time getting that movie made. I mean, it's famous now, but you know, almost every studio in town turned it down. They passed on it. And he went, you know, totally crazy trying to make that movie. Yeah. A movie now that we see is just being, you know, part of sort of like, you know, our sort of regular film. I mean, who doesn't own a copy of Star Wars? Yeah, you know, right. it's like, I'm you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, right. Um, so. well, uh, well, what's one of your favorite movies? One of my favorite films? I really love um, The Age of Innocence by Martin Scorsese. I think that's an amazing movie. And um, I really also love Vertigo by Alfred Hitchcock. Um, I really like, actually, it's a little film, it's called A Little Princess, that came out a couple years ago, and it actually didn't do very well at the box office, which I think it was just sort of like a marketing sort of error, perhaps, because I think it's an amazing film, and it's, um, it's a really beautiful sort of fairy tale story. I love Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of along the lines of the films that I want to do, so sort of these big epic sort of love tragedies, but I really, I, I cry, I still cry when I watch Titanic, which is like... And as far as your uh, uh, graduate work, could you just touch briefly on the classes? Well, at USC, what we do is um, they, you have a set curriculum your first year, and you take this class called 507, and you take 508, which is actually the film that's screening here I did for that second semester. And then after that, you're sort of left to sort of find your way and, and specialize in what it is that you want to do. So the way the school works is the first year, you kind of get totally inundated in everything. You do cinematography, you edit, you write, you direct, and some people who come into USC know right away they want to do cinematography. But you know the school really wants you to get experience and exposure to all the different aspects of filmmaking. And then after that, you go in and you specialize and you start taking the classes that really fit with what you want to do. So that by the time when you leave, when you've graduated, not only have you really gone in depth with the area that you really want to do with the rest of your life, but you've also had experience in all the different areas of filmmaking, which I think is really, really critical. Because if you're directing a film on set and you're trying to, let's say you're doing location scoutings and the sound person can't can't make it. Well, if you don't have any understanding of how sound works, you might make a choice on a location that's actually going to hurt your film. So I think it's really critical to have an understanding of what each department needs so you can sort of help them in some ways as much as you can, sort of bring the best to, to, the, to your film that you can. So I think that's really, really critical. But, and the professors um, are, some of them are the most amazing. Um, inspiring people that I've ever known and and then some I mean it's just like life you know you, you have you know really good friends and then you have people that you're like you know we just don't see things the same you know what I'm saying but my classmates are really the people that make film school worth it it's the people I go to class with I go to class with some of the most amazing talented intelligent people that I've ever known in my entire life and film school wouldn't be the same without them that's really what's made it really special for me so and if you can talk uh, a little bit about the film that's out now. Well, the film that I have here at Chicago is called Just Cake, and it's a black and white five-minute film that I did my second semester. And it's, it's actually kind of funny because it's totally different from any other type of film that I've ever made. I did, it's based off a short that Martin Scorsese did 30 years ago called The Big Shave. And I saw that film right before I started this class. And I was like, ooh, I was like, I want to try something like that. You know, one character in one location and making sort of an experimental political statement out of it. And, and I did it, and I tried it, and it's like an honor that it's here at Chicago, but, you know, I, I have to say that's really what film school really is about. I mean, I'll probably never make a movie like this again. I think there's some limitations in it. I think there's things that I like about it, and, um, but I think in some ways filmmaking works best when it's, it's not a political statement in some ways. But, um, but it's definitely you know, what I wanted to do. I wanted to try something unlike you know, any other film I'd ever made before. And it's an honor, and I'm really, really grateful to the festival for accepting it, and I've had such a good time in Chicago. I really like it a lot, so. Um, and when's this gonna uh, premiere, or it's, uh, the film's gonna be next weekend? 
Yeah, it's screening on um, Friday at the Doc Films Theater at 11.45 at night, and then it's screening on Saturday actually here at the Music Box Theater at 10 at night, which is really great because the theater's huge. Yeah. It's like 700 people, so I'm hoping that a lot of people come out and see it because I'd love to know what people have to say about it. I mean, people either love it or hate it. Yeah. People either like a, like the first screening, some people like a burst into applause, and then other people were like, what was that? You know? <laughs> so it's kind of interesting to sort of feel the audience response because filmmaking is all about reaching out to people mm -hmm. and so that's the most important part of making a film is sort of feeling how an audience responds to it because if, if it's not working for them and they don't like it then as a filmmaker I feel like it's my responsibility to go back and say okay this isn't working or this didn't work so how could I make it work better the next time so which I think is really invaluable. Tara I, I can't wait to see it I think you're have an excellent film on your hands, so uh, th thank you for coming to the festival, and uh, we'll be looking forward for your work.